Hello, my name is Burl Beaupre and I'm going to share a video with you about making drums from the raw skin. The process can be a little bit messy and smelly to do in the house. <laughs> These are the kinds of drums that I'm making. It's, it's just the skin is just sort of stuck on to the, to the drum rim. And this one I did with 12 strings, but most of them and the, the other ones are done with eight strings. And this was one of the finished products. And I'm very happy with the process. And, um, I found this container it was a swirly thing at Value Village, so I'm just going to cut a hole out in the back and falling down all the edges in the back and the front so there's no sharp edges and it will make a, an excellent rim. So now I've got my hole cut out of my, my um, bowl or um, my Lazy Susan that I found. It makes an excellent rim. I'm just taking a file and filing down these rough edges here. Just where it's, it's kind of got splintered and, and it's so nice and light. It's going to make an excellent rim. I'm giving my drums a quick, quick coat of varnish so that uh, they don't expand with moisture once you get your skin on and crack your skin. So I'll probably go through all my drums. I thought I was going to get started today, but I guess I'll be doing it tomorrow. So today we're just getting the frames ready. Let's go. Cool. Okay, uh, got my skins laid out on my frames. Two of them. We'll do the same to this one. This one. Kind of see where I marked it. Ouch. You didn't see that. Mm. Yeah, don't do it right the first time. Should be good. Okay, I'm just wrapping the, pulling the skin tight around, around the edges. Um, the um, back side of the, the uh, skin has a very sticky quality to it and it sticks very well to the wood. Um, when I start lacing, I just pull through um, and leave one end in the center. And I, I connect it in the end. I just leave it lying in the center. And uh, the lacing, I, I'm going clockwise and I'm trying to keep my lacing under. I go under and go clockwise to the opposite side the opposite hole as I'm going and just gently pulling it through. Sometimes you get a knot and you have to pull a little harder. And you can always straighten up your strings after when you're when you're done. Sometimes it can get a little confusing at the beginning, but you'll see the pattern happening. And I, I started out with uh, 12, 
12 holes. Be easier to do with yeah, hands. working with the gloves didn't didn't really work out with, for me. I, I know it is kind of uh, strong smelling at this point, to do this. which is good reason to do it outside. A lot of people can't handle it, but you sort of get used to it as you go because you know it's going to be worth it in the end. I think it, it feels, you know, it is a little bit um, like a very stiff dough. That's what it feels like. Just kind of have to play around with it and, and get them, get them, once you get it all laced, just do it loosely and then once you get it all laced in, then you can go around and tighten it, tighten it all up. And make sure you pull all the skin down really well on the sides. You don't want it too overly tight, just nice and snug. So when you get it all put together, you just um, run your lacing in, in and out, gather it in the circle, and you can kind of slide it around to get it right in the middle. It is very slippery. Just wind it in and out like a weaving. There are many different ways to do this, but this is a, a basic a basic method just to, for the hand to hold in the, in the center. So once I got it all laced how I wanted it, I joined the, the what was left of the long sinew to the beginning sinew that I left in the center. I just cut a little hole in the one that's in the center and slid the end lace through the hole and joined them together before I started to weave it in and out around in a circle. Man has always used the concept of reaching God through the animals. <clears throat> Even the Christians need the dove or the Holy Spirit to be a go between between animals. Um, became the the symbols of different spirit powers. The animal skin on the drum gave man a spirit connection to the animal, which in turn had powers to connect with God. Jesus, he became the sacrificial lamb and the lion, the dove, the fish, the way. <clears throat> the stars became the animal spirits in the sky, close to God. The sound of the beating drum was the basic heartbeat sound that a newborn baby was connected to life and mother. 
the sounds connected to the mother were the familiar beating, like as in mother nature, the healer, the nurturer, the one who gave us sustenance. One of my first favorite songs was um, by, called Bye Bye Bunting. It was a, a lullaby I learned as a child, and I cannot remember where it came from. So uh, my first drum song with that, I had to use that rhythm for, for playing in the background here. Uh, drumming's always had a, a deeply spiritual meaning and a way to connect to the spiritual realms of the God, the spirits, the ancestors, and peace. <clears throat> it must have been frowned on by the church for many natives which were forced to give up all their spiritual ways just to suppress their customs. I've noticed that in the northern communities in Manitoba, which I was raised, um, in which I also belong to the Norway House Band, since I got my status, um, anyways, the ones that I am friends with over there um, never got involved with drumming or all that Indian stuff, I've heard it called. Even they fear offending the church and the Christian doctrine. Still today, many of them anyway. The energy from the animals still <clears throat> connects to their to, to the cells of the non-living material, like feathers from the reverend birds. The rhythm of the beating is said to elevate one in reaching deeper states, thus getting closer to the source energy. Oh, working with the skin, I use a smudge to help dispel negativity, and it also kills um, any bacteria and germs in the air. Kind of like blessing your food before you eat it. Some people like to personalize their drum with a little sage pouches or paint images on it. I am an artist. I'm a painter, <clears throat> so I'll probably paint a picture on my drums eventually. My first drum seemed to bring out an image on its own. It kind of looks like a, a wolf standing in the, in the forest. Um, and these are fra called frame drums. And the surface will change with the humidity. Too much can make the drum wavy and should not be played when it's in that state in any way because it can damage it. <clears throat> if it's too dry, it can make it too tight and, and kind of tinny sounding. It just doesn't get the vibrato. I made one that was too tight and I didn't like the sound of it. It was gifted, I gifted that one to a hunter, the hunter, and I wanted it as good as I can get it. I'll make another video on that one showing how I had to fix it. I made a few little blunders in making these drums, like too big of a hole, and, but that's just all part of, you know, the drums, nature of the drum and that, that particular drum. The one, the one that I did make too tight, I had to undo it and undid all the sinew and loosened it up and started over again. Each drum is totally unique. They say that um, one should not be drinking or, or using drugs and that should never be used as part of any kind of drumming. It doesn't exactly carry like positive energy.
I think it's important to be respectful of your drums and never put your drum face down on the ground. Um, the size of the drum rim will affect the sound. The bigger the drum rim and the bigger the or the deeper the, the vibrato of the sound. I have made some small ones for my grandchildren. I, I think I have about eight or nine of them. And if I ever get another hide, I want to make a, for sure, a 17 inch drum. I'll have to put it out to the universe. I'm not, I'm not actually that musically inclined, so I have a harder time keeping a rhythm. I found a few places online with some drum music to drum along with for practice, and I'm not a singer. I am, I'm a visual artist actually, but as long as I'm making something, I'm content and living with purpose. But back to making drums. If you can fuss with the lacings if you want to, to make it all neat and trimmed, I don't mind the character. You know, each one has its own. The first one I forgot to connect to the beginning to the end. And I don't think it'll matter. It all dries pretty stiff. I've speeded up the um, up the, the video just so that it's not too boring for you to watch me um, lace each hole one by one. Late, I speeded it up so fast I sounded like a chipmunk, so I kind of had to do this narr narration over top. I know I called the lacing strings a few times, but that's just my ADD kicking in. So I guess lacing is the right word. When I'm doing it, I always go clockwise, passing the lace underneath. So when gathering for the hand grasp, you can use different methods or be creative and make something up. Try not to get it too tight when pulling all the laces together. Snug is good and you should be able to push down in the middle after they say about easily for about maybe about an inch without too much force. And you can always trim things as you go. <clears throat> when you're done, you can give it a little wash down and put the face and, and smudge it to hang before you dry it. You can dry it naturally. Um, don't have to use a lot of heat or anything. Um, best to not be in a hurry. I, I did hang mine near a fireplace um, and since it was still you know still March it was still a bit cool when the air is moist um, the face of the drum may get uh, very wavy but you can warm it up near a source or just rub your hands on it I say the oil from your hands is is important in keeping the drum um, in good condition. Still lots to learn, but thank you for watching. So now I brought them in the house to dry. And I'm hanging them here on it. Just happen to have a set of deer horns hanging here. And this is